Okay, so now that I have my coil cut, I need to take the end of it that does not have the tape on it. And then I also need a piece of my yarn cut. I usually go about five or six feet, so about my height, somewhere around there, about your height. Um, if you have extra yarn, you are more likely to get knots. If you don't have enough, you just have to add yarn more often. So it just kind of depends on which issue you would rather deal with. So um, on the end of my yarn, I tied my needle. You don't have to have it tied on there if you don't want to. You can just put the needle through the yarn and hope that it stays as well. Okay, so I need the end of my yarn that is not connected to the needle and I need the end of my coil that does not have the tape on it. And I'm going to put them so that they're facing each other this way. Now I'm going to take my yarn and just place it on top of the coil. I want it about two or three inches back from where the, the corner right here ends. So the corner where I cut it ends about here. So I want about two inches or three inches back from there. So with my left hand, I'm right-handed. So with my left hand, I'm going to hold on to my coil. If you are right, I'm sorry, if you're left-handed, you might wanna use your right hand to hold on to the coil. Then I'm gonna take my other hand and I have this held down and I'm gonna start where, where, that, where that angle starts and I'm just going to wrap around and around. I'm going towards myself versus away from myself. If you're more comfortable going the other way, that's fine. You might have to tweak a couple little things later on, but whatever you're more comfortable with. And I'm just gonna keep going around. You have to be careful to be kind of pulling it over so that it's snug against the other yarn that you've done on there. You don't wanna have little white gaps like that. Okay, I'm gonna kind of straighten this out. As you can see, when I'm straightening out my yarn, I'm holding the whole thing tight with this hand so that it doesn't come undone. I just keep going until I get close to the end. Okay, so when you have about two or three inches wrapped, you're ready for the next step. This step usually hurts my hands because you have to hold it for a while. Okay, so again, make sure that on the other side of your yarn, you have your needle because you'll need that now. What you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're going to bend it down so that it matches up where you stopped your weaving. Okay, so again, I'm gonna bend that down until where I stopped my weaving and where I started my weaving are the same. Okay, then I usually scoot back a little ways to make this opening a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna hold it really tight and start moving down. Okay, this is gonna eventually look kind of like the eye of your needle. Okay, so like I said, looks similar to that. Um, make sure you're holding this tight and you wanna go past where that cut piece was so if I showed you just right here, all you can see now is the one piece of cord. The cut piece of cord is wrapped in there. Okay, so once I cover that, I'm gonna add a couple more loops. Okay, I'll probably go about eight. And then you're going to take this and you are going to fold it so that it is snug up against the opening. Okay, so once I have that close right here, I'm going to take the needle on the other end of my yarn and I'm going to bring it up through the eye. 
and then I'm going to pull it tight and I'm going to go over to my coil and then I'm going to wrap around eight times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I'm going to pull it snug against that again and I'm going to come up through the eye it tight and then wrap it around eight times again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And pull it tight, come up through the eye, and wrap it around again. I usually don't count that first wrap. I should count after that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's important again still that you're not leaving white gaps. And I'm gonna pull it close. And I'm gonna bring the needle up through. Oh, wrong needle. Too many on my desk. And then pull it snug. And I usually don't count the first one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you're gonna to continue to work on that. I've had people that will do about 10 around before they go through and that's fine, but you don't wanna get a whole lot more than that because if you do, your gaps are going to be too big and your bowl is gonna be full of holes in your basket. Okay, I'm pretty sure that was eight. Okay, so I'm gonna curve it in I'm going to go through that eye again. Okay, the next one's going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to continue with what I was doing. So I'm going to wrap around the once. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now this time, I have another opening that's closer to me than where that eye of that needle was. So I'm gonna pull this snug in, and instead of coming up through here, I'm gonna come up through this row. It's a little tricky where that base is. You could do either one there, but I'm gonna go for that one. And then I just continue with the same thing. Okay, I'm gonna go around eight times. I'm gonna pull it snug. And instead of going all the way back, to the eye where I started, I'm gonna to go to the closest area that I can get to. So I'm gonna wrap around once. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna pull it in, and I'm gonna come up, and then I'm gonna keep going. The piece that you're making right now is going to be the bottom of your bowl. So depending on how wide you make this piece go around, that is how wide the base of your bowl is going to be. If I were to have to put this away right now, I would just kind of fold this up and then I would take my string and just wrap around the outside and then I would put that away. 